Hey there, my fellow gardeners. If you have been following me for some time, you all know that I post a garden guide every single month that gives you ideas on things to either start from seed or transplant. The theme for October is to finish up planting your fall garden. For those of us in the southern parts of the United States, garden zones eight and up. It is also finally the correct time of year to start planting things like strawberries, onions, garlic, and potatoes. So I will definitely be talking about those crops later in this video. If you're new here, my name is Jara and I teach people how to garden, grow food, raise backyard chickens, and keep bees. So if those topics interest you, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I post about them on a daily basis. I am starting this garden guide with the crops that you can either start from seed or transplant right now, and then I'll move into important garden tasks, tips, and reminders for the month of October. Let's start with all the seeds that you can sow right now during the month of October. It is very important that you know your first average winter frost date so you can figure out if you can plant any of the crops I'm about to mention. If you do not know your average frost dates, then go check out a website called plantmaps.com. You just put in your zip code and it will give you a lot of important garden information that pertains to your exact area. That information includes your average first and last frost dates and like average maximum high and low monthly temperatures for every single month. We are getting closer to the first frost dates for some gardeners, especially those of you in zone eight. Zone 9 and above have a lot more time until their first frost dates. You zone 10 and 11 gardeners basically can just keep planting because you barely get a frost. Take me for example, I am zone 9B and my first frost is the very last week of December. So I have a solid three months before my first frost and can squeeze in some quick maturing crops or plant cold weather things that will survive the cold. Since the first winter frost date is going to vary across you know, zones 8 and up, I'm going to go through each crop and mention it in terms of how many days does it take from seed to harvest. That way you can calculate or backtrack from your first winter frost date to determine if you have enough time to plant that particular crop. The first crop on my list are beans. Whether you're planting bush beans or pole vining type of beans, they're all ready to harvest in about two and a half to three months. I recommend bush beans if you have a smaller garden, but if you have more space and something that they can grow up upon, I definitely recommend the pole or vining beans because I feel they produce a lot more bean pods than the bush types. However, the bush types are really convenient because you can just direct sow seeds for them underneath a lot of your other plants or taller types of crops. For example, right here, I have a bunch of bush beans that I direct sow seeds right underneath my okra plants. These okra plants are gonna get pretty tall. These bush beans will fill in the area underneath. It will also help prevent backsplash of soil borne diseases from getting up onto the leaves of my okra plants. This also works really great for planting underneath tomatoes as well. And just to give you guys some recommendations for the bush beans, I really, really love Harvester as just a standard green bean. And then I like the golden yellow wax because it's just so pretty and you never see yellow colored green beans in the grocery store. For pole or vining beans, you can't go wrong with the rattlesnake pole bean. It has a green pod with these beautiful purple streaks and it does really well in a wide range of conditions. If you want a standard green bean version of a pole or vining bean, then I recommend Kentucky Blue or Super Productive. And lastly, one of my favorites is the Purple Potted because it's also really, really pretty. It has these intensely purple pods that just look really great. And by the way, if you're looking for seeds or plants for any of the things that I'm about to mention, I probably have them on my website so you can go find them there. If you struggle to grow beans or maybe you've never grown them before, I have a YouTube video tutorial that will tell you everything you need to know from planting the seeds all the way to harvest and I will link that below in the description. Next up we have early maturing squash like the 60 to 75 day cultivars. For the majority of squash cultivars I recommend that you don't direct sow seeds right now that you transplant them. You still have time to transplant but if you do find any of the early maturing varieties like the ones that take 60 to maybe like 70 days to start producing from seed then you can direct sow seeds for those right now if you hurry up and do it in the early part of October. And I'll give you some ideas for some of the cultivars that I recommend. Gray zucchini and Alexandria zucchini take about 50 days. Early white patty pan squash, the yellow crookneck or black beauty zucchini take about 60 days. This one right here is the Alexandria squash, which is one of my favorites. Now you have to take care of these squash plants because any little issue will cause a major setback in harvest time. So monitor very closely for worm damage and spray with BT if you find worms. 
Also fertilize every week with a small dose of like an organic granular fertilizer, about eighth of a cup of like Job's or Espoma brand to encourage rapid growth. Our next crop is cucumbers. Again, focus on the cultivars that take about 60, maybe 75 days from seed to harvest. So you make sure you harvest all your cucumbers before your first winter frost arrives. My trellis system for the cucumbers to grow on is super easy to build. I put two T posts 10 feet apart I get a 10 foot long piece of three quarter inch electrical conduit pipe. Don't get smaller than three quarter inch because it will bend under the weight of whatever you're growing on it. And then I just get a PVC T. You can use this kind or even the L shaped ones. Just put it on top of the T post. You stick your electrical conduit pipe in there and it stays put. And then I weave this heavy duty mesh vinyl trellis material that I get from Amazon. And I will definitely put a link below in the description because this stuff lasts for years. And I just weave it over the electrical conduit pipe, kind of like a curtain, and then drape it down, tie it if you have to. Those cucumbers will grow up this entire thing and it works really well for other crops like tomatoes. And it even holds the heavier type things like trombone, sinora picante, or lufa. And just like what I mentioned with the squash, the worms, the bugs, insects, everything love to chew up cucumbers. So even a little bit of damage is a major setback to the plant and it won't start producing as early as possible. So monitor these seedlings very closely for any worm damage. If you see damage, spray with BT. Also, cucumbers get powdery mildew quite often, especially here in Florida. If that happens, I spray with one cup of hydrogen peroxide per gallon of water. And to give you some recommendations on cultivars that I personally like to grow, for fresh eating, I can't recommend Bates Alpha enough or China Jade, which is actually what I have growing right here. For pickling cucumbers, I recommend the Wisconsin 58 SMR or Boston Pickling. And if you want more in-depth details on how to grow cucumbers from seed all the way to harvest, I do have a tutorial on my YouTube channel, so I will post that below in the description. The next category of crops that you can grow right now are smaller greens like lettuces, bok choy, tat soy, and any of the like smaller Asian greens. Depending on what you're growing, they usually take 30 to around 55 days for you to start harvesting. You can harvest the little baby greens earlier, but I like to let my plants grow a little bit bigger in size before I start taking from them. And these things are super easy to start from seed. Just find bare spots in your garden, get a little rake, break up the soil surface and make it a little bit fluffy. And this is optional, but I highly recommend it. I love adding tons of blood meal into the soil whenever I'm planting anything that I'm eating for its leaves. Blood meal is very high in nitrogen. I feel that it promotes a lot of lush, leafy green growth and it intensifies the colors. It's just nicely dark colored greens the way that it should be. So I just take a couple handfuls of blood meal, sprinkle that over the surface and then rake that in. You don't really have to measure anything out because blood meal is an organic type of fertilizer so you won't risk burning your plants. Once you've mixed in that blood meal with the soil, you're gonna take your seeds for lettuce, bok choy, whatever, sprinkle it in here and then just gently rake them into the soil and that's it. Keep it nice and watered and they will germinate really quickly. And I pretty much do the same thing for two other leafy green crops, the Swiss chard and any kind of mustard greens, except I will put a little hole, put the blood meal around that area and then the seeds and space them out like one foot apart because they do get much bigger than say a lettuce plant, for example. Next up, we have a bunch of heat tolerant greens and I'm just gonna list them out right here because there's a lot of them. If you're in zones nine and up, these types of heat loving tropical greens will survive your winter because it just doesn't get cold enough to kill them. So you still have time to either plant them or start them from seed. This right here is a big patch of longevity spinach. It has a flavor like mild lettuce in my opinion, but it is pretty tasty. But what I really like about it is that it spreads and it kind of stays low to the ground. So I have it growing underneath a lot of my fruit trees because it forms a thick mat and it blocks the weeds from popping up and growing in the area. These things are actually perennial in the warmer zones again where it doesn't get cold enough to kill the plants which makes me like them even more because I don't have to keep succession sowing more and more seeds or planting them like I do with things like lettuce. Next up we have flowers and I recommend those that take about two to three months to start blooming from seed. That includes things like sunflowers, cosmos, zinnias, and marigolds. Since I'm in Florida we also get the monarch butterfly migration that starts in fall 
So I kind of place my focus on flowers and plants that will help them out. That includes two different categories of plants or flowers. The first one includes any kind of flower that is rich in nectar to help support the adult butterflies, things like tithonia, zinnias, and sunflowers. And secondly, that would include all sorts of milkweed because that is the host plant for the monarch butterfly caterpillar. I recommend that you plant native milkweed to your area. You can either buy transplants and plant them right into your garden right now or start some from seed. One thing about milkweed that you should just expect because it's totally normal is that it does attract a lot of aphids and these like little red and black milkweed bugs. Your milkweed is going to get them. There's nothing you can do about it. And yes, it can look a little bit gross, but please do not spray the plants with any kind of treatments. Leave it alone. Plant the milkweed for the monarch butterfly caterpillar. If you spray any kind of treatments or do anything, you would be killing those monarch butterfly caterpillars. All right, so let's move on to the next crop, and that would be carrots. For us gardeners with mild winters, we have a very small window to actually grow carrots because they do not like high heat. It's best to sow seeds for them in fall so that they will grow through fall, winter, and maybe some cases spring. And they actually get sweeter if they get a little bit of a frost. So the timing is just perfect if you start sowing seeds right now. October can still be a little warm because the temperatures just fluctuate so much day to day. So for the month of October, if you want to direct sow seeds for carrots, I highly recommend the heat tolerant kind like Kuroda, or any kind of the darker colored carrots like the purple or black cultivars because any kind of vegetable that is dark in color like dark blue, purple, black, whatever, tend to also have a higher heat tolerance than its regular lighter colored counterparts. So I start direct sowing seeds for those in October. If you want to grow the more traditional carrots like Danvers, which is one of my personal favorites, then wait to direct sow seeds for those in November. And I do have a YouTube video tutorial on how to grow carrots from seed all the way to harvest if you need help because carrots can be a little bit tricky. But once you understand how to grow them, you'll be totally fine. Now that the temperatures are getting a little bit more cooler and milder, you can go ahead and transplant or direct sow seed for all sorts of herbs. In general, traditional European type of herbs like Mediterranean climates. So it's very important that you try to mimic that as much as possible. Mediterranean climates are just moderately warm, not extremely hot, not extremely cold, and the soils are much more drier. I find that when I plant my herbs in grow bags, they really flourish because their soil in grow bags dry out pretty quickly. If you're planting herbs like parsley, dill, and fennel, just know that they are also host plants for lots of different kinds of butterfly caterpillars. So don't be surprised if you find some butterfly caterpillars munching on your plants. What I do is just plant way more than enough, knowing that some of it is going to be sacrificed to those caterpillars. If you're in the warmer zones, like the upper zone 9, 10, and 11, where you barely get any frost or any real winter, you can continue planting the more tropical type herbs like Thai basil, Cuban oregano, lemongrass, and papalo. This right here is papalo. It's not a very well-known herb, at least, you know, in the United States. It is well-known in South America, though, and it smells and tastes very similar to cilantro, but it doesn't give you that soapy flavor if you're one of those people that when you eat cilantro, it tastes like soap. Luckily, I'm not one of those people, and I absolutely love cilantro, but unfortunately, it's so hot here in my Florida garden that I really cannot grow cilantro except for the coldest um, time of the year. Papalo here, though, thrived throughout my entire summer. It didn't even wilt. This is one plant. It's a huge bush, so I was shocked to find out how well this grew during the summer here, which says a lot because I struggle trying to find different crops and things that will still thrive and produce during a Florida summer. So this is a great option for you right here. Not a lot of people have seed for this, but I do put seeds on my website as I'm harvesting them. These are the flower pods right here. As they dry out, they open up and they kind of look like a dandelion or marigold seeds. I absolutely love this. I'm going to be growing this year round in my garden. But going back to the traditional or European type of herbs, a lot of them are perennial, so they should live a long time in your garden. Ideally, though, you want to start them from seed or plant any new transplants right now during fall. So that way they grow into nice, big, mature plants. And by the time summer comes, they're pretty big, established plants that can kind of handle all the fluctuations and extreme weather conditions of the summer much better. All right, so that was all of the things that I recommend that you start from seed during the month of October. Let's move into the things that you should be transplanting. First up on the list is tomatoes. A lot of people are asking me if it's too late to plant tomatoes. I would say it definitely is too late to start them from seed if you wanted to plant them and get a fall harvest. I start my seeds in July, so I transplant them in September, and then I hurry up and get a fall harvest before cold weather arrives. If you're in zone 10, 
10 and 11, you possibly have time to continue transplanting tomatoes even in the month of October because your first frost date doesn't come for a much longer time. I would focus on cultivars that are quick to start producing from seed. That would include your early season tomatoes, any kind of dwarf or micro dwarf tomatoes, and sometimes the cherries, especially some of the hybrids, they are pretty quick to start producing from seed. And if you didn't know, I've been doing a live fall garden class where we meet periodically a couple times in a month so I can teach you different types of topics when it comes to fall gardening. I do that live here on YouTube so make sure you're subscribed to my channel that way you get notified of when I go live for those classes. The next live class is actually this Sunday October 1st. I'm going to be taking you through the garden and we're going to check up on my tomatoes. I'm going to show you guys how I trellis up my tomatoes depending on the type, you know, determinate versus indeterminate, and just talk about general tomato care. If that's something that interests you, come and join me live. Again, that will be this Sunday, October 1st at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. If you would like to get a schedule of any of my live classes sent to you directly through email, make sure you join my email newsletter. I'll put a link in the description below because that's where I send like dates and time notices for any of my live classes. October is a pretty busy month for me because it marks the beginning of that window of where I can plant quite a few different kinds of crops that I cannot grow during the rest of the year. That includes things like onions, potatoes, and strawberries. I'm in the process of making YouTube video tutorials on each of those crops, so be on the lookout because those will be posted as I go along and start planting these things in my garden. But let's talk about onions first. For us southern gardeners, the best time of year to plant onions is fall, winter, and spring, that way you harvest them all out before summer arrives. Onions are light sensitive. They will start the bulbing process depending on how many hours of sunlight they get. So since we are planting onions during the winter time when we have less daylight hours, you would wanna plant this short day varieties of onions. If you're up north, you're gonna be planting the long day varieties. If you're somewhere in the middle, you would be planting the intermediate day varieties. If you're not sure which variety you should be planting, you can simply Google it. Just type in something like short day onion map and you should be able to find a map of the United States that's color coded depending on what kind of onion variety you should be growing. With that said, I prefer to grow my onions from either seed or transplants, but you can also buy little bulbing sets. I've heard a lot of gardeners don't have success with the little bulb sets, so that's why I recommend either start them from seed or get yourself some transplants. Knowing that I had to transplant my onions in October, I started my seeds about two, three months ago. They are nice big transplant sizes now and I gotta get to it and start planting them in my garden. You can also start planting leeks and chives as well. For chives, I just direct sow seeds everywhere. Leeks are planted from little transplants, very similar to onions. I started mine from seed at the same time that I started my onion seeds. Right now, it can be difficult for us Southern gardeners to find either onion transplants seed potatoes and strawberries because a lot of the companies that have them are located up north and they're not planting their stuff at the same time of year that we are. They're planting it like spring, summer, and fall. A lot of these companies are not accepting orders right now or even shipping these things out for us southern gardeners to plant them in our garden. So it does get very hard trying to find these things. I will list in the description below a couple companies that I am aware of that are still taking orders and ship out, you know, these types of crops in time for us southern gardeners to be planting them. If you're aware of any other companies, please add that to the comments below. I can't tell you how many people message me asking me where to find these things. And some of the ones that I'm aware of are already sold out for the season. All right, so that brings us on to the next crop that right now is the perfect window to start planting them for us southern gardeners, and that would be garlic. If you are gardening in the south, make sure you're picking these soft neck varieties because they do much better with our climate and our conditions. You can grow garlic even in Florida, but there is some tricks to it. There's a process of vernalization, which is exposing the garlic to a certain period of cold to kind of mimic a winter because that is what triggers them to bulb. So if you've tried growing garlic before and it wasn't very successful or you got really small little garlic bulbs, that's probably why they really needed to be vernalized. And to do that, you just put them in the fridge for a couple weeks before you plant them. With that said, it's very helpful if you find a local seller in your state that sells garlic, potatoes, strawberries. That way you know they're the kind that will actually grow well in your garden. All right, so moving along, the next crop we have are strawberries. In the South, it's best to grow strawberries during fall, winter, and spring. I grow my strawberries from crowns or like roots that I purchased, and I start planting them in October with November being the last month to hurry up and get some in. There are lots of different varieties of strawberries, and again, you have to make sure you're picking the right one that will actually grow 
grow in your area and this can be very challenging especially if you're a southern gardener because if you go online and try to find bare root strawberry plants most of the time it's from companies that are up north and they don't really carry the cultivars that grow well in the south so very important that you buy them from a local seller just to make sure that they're the correct variety that will grow well in your area and it's also very hard to find strawberry bare roots as well they sell out really quick i'm sure there's a whole bunch of nurseries especially here in florida that sell them so if you're aware of anyone that still has stock and is taking orders please comment below because everyone's asking me and i really don't know who's not sold out by this point so that would be very helpful the next crop i want to talk about is potatoes again for us southern gardeners we plant and grow our potatoes during fall winter and spring and just like some of the other crops i mentioned it's very hard finding companies that are taking orders and shipping out potatoes at this time of the year because most of these companies are up north and they're not planting their stuff right now luckily i saved my own seed potatoes from the potatoes that I harvested last season so I'm okay. You don't even find them in the stores right now if you want to buy some. Normally I start seeing seed potatoes pop up in like my local tractor supply sometime in January or February when it's actually kind of too late to start planting them. So if you're aware of any companies that are taking orders right now and shipping seed potatoes please let us know in the comments below. That will help everyone else out a lot. For the South, I recommend the early maturing varieties because they are susceptible to lots of diseases, nematodes, and pests. So you wanna plant them, have them grow quickly and harvest them out as soon as possible. A great option includes the red Norland potato because they are very early maturing. Since I'm a very small garden, I prefer to plant my potatoes in grow bags because I can control the vines a little bit better and it makes harvesting so easy because I just flip that bag over and I harvest everything out. I do have a how to plant potatoes in grow bags tutorial on my YouTube channel. So if you wanna see how I do it, go check that video out. I will link it below in the description. In one of my live fall garden classes, I was teaching you guys how to start all sorts of different kinds of brassicas from seed just in time to be transplanting in October. So hopefully by this time your seedlings are a pretty decent size and are ready to be transplanted into the garden. The brassicas family is a huge group and includes all sorts of different kinds of crops. October is the perfect time to start planting these things in the garden because they do not like high heat and the temperatures have cooled down just enough to make them happy. In my opinion it's too late to start sowing these things from seed right now. You should have done that about two months ago so that they would be ready to transplant by now. But it is okay to direct sow seeds for these smaller types of things in the brassica family. That would be bok choy, tatsoi, some of the smaller napa cabbages, and any kind of the brassicas that you grow just to eat their leaves like kale and mustard. For all the rest of them, like the bigger heading types, you need to use transplants at this point because they take such a long time to start producing that you want to make sure that's all occurring within your winter or like coldest time of the year. If they're exposed to too much heat, they just bolt. If you're in garden zones nine and up where your ground does not freeze, you can still plant root crops like ginger, turmeric, and shampoo ginger. Just as long as those rhizomes stay nice and warm and don't freeze, the plant will continue to survive straight through your winter. I prefer to plant mine in grow bags because those rhizomes really spread and I need to control it a little bit or they will literally overtake my small garden. If you're in a colder climate, zone eight and above where your ground freezes or it snows, you will have to either plant these in a container and just bring them indoors during the winter time. You could treat them just like you would house plants or you will have to dig out your rhizomes before your first winter frost moves through your area and just keep them in a cool dry dark place during the winter time so that you can just replant them outside in springtime after all danger of frost has passed and if you're in zones nine and up you still have time to plant lots of different kind of fruit trees here is a big list of ideas for you guys i say you still have time to plant them that way they have a chance to get a little established before our winter season arrives because it doesn't get cold enough to really kill them if your plant is very small or super cold sensitive depending on how tropical of a fruit tree you're planting then you might need to cover it just a couple nights out of the entire winter season just to protect it and make sure it's okay. I do have a couple videos on how to grow Barbados cherry, pineapples, and muscadine grapes. If you want to learn more, go check those videos out so that you can successfully grow them at home. Now let's move on to some of the important garden tasks and reminders for the month of October. We are right in the middle of the most active time for hurricanes. I would say September and October tend to produce the most. So take a look around your garden and harvest herbs for drying, seeds for saving, 
making loofah, fruits, etc. before Hurricane comes and blows it all away. Make supports for young trees so they don't snap or bend over. I drive a T-post into the ground right next to any of my younger trees and then I take some parachute cord and wrap it around the T-post and the trunk together so that it will support everything and make sure that the hurricane doesn't blow my trees down. Also just do some general garden cleanup so you're ready in case a hurricane comes. That way you know things aren't flying around. For gardeners in zone 8 and some of you in zone 9A that get some pretty cold frost, it's time to plan and install your preferred method of frost protection for your garden. Focus on heat loving and tropical plants and fruit trees that are very cold sensitive and just make sure they're taken care of. Now that the outside temperatures are cooling down and it's pleasant to be outside again, it's a good time to mulch the garden. I order a delivery of free wood chips from Chip Drop once a year and heavily mulch my entire garden. They deliver a very huge pile like the size of my car and it takes me a few days to move it all in place but it's totally worth it. It's great timing too because I am mulching the base of all of my fruit trees which protects them during the winter. Now that we are going into fall and winter, you might have lots of fruit trees that go dormant. For example, peach, nectarine, grapes, and plum trees go dormant and will drop all of their leaves. They are not actively growing so do not fertilize. It's basically wasting fertilizer. But you might be growing some fruit trees that are evergreen and don't go dormant like citrus, mangoes, and avocados. I personally continue fertilizing them through the winter. Citrus is a very heavy feeder and if you want nice green glossy leaves, they need constant nutrition. Things like mangoes, avocados, and lychees benefit benefit from fertilizers higher in potassium and phosphorus with very little nitrogen. Actually too much nitrogen makes them grow lots of leaves which can cause reduction in flowers and fruit production and also weak branches that won't support the weight of the fruit. So be careful, make sure you use a fertilizer formulated for mangoes and avocados with those types of fruit trees. It's also a good time to start spraying trees and fruit trees with horticultural oil to suppress or smother out various diseases and pests. That way you have less of an incidence next year. It's too hot during most of the year for me here in Florida to spray with anything oil-based because it burns my plants, so I wait for fall and winter to apply oil-based treatments. I hope you really liked this list I put together for the month of October. If I missed any cool seed or plant ideas, feel free to drop a comment below or let me know what you're most excited to grow this fall. If you enjoyed this video, a big thumbs up would mean a lot to me and it really helps out my channel. And hey, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you know right away when I post new videos. You can find a copy of this guide in the monthly gardening guide section on my website. So that way you can save it, copy or share it. Or if you prefer, you can sign up for my email newsletter and I'll send it to you automatically at the beginning of each month. I'm hoping your garden does amazingly well this fall and you have a huge harvest in the next upcoming months. Thank you for watching and happy gardening.